I'm going to show you the use of the bending irons. Like we said, we'll explain it a little later. So, we've got a piece of metal that we'd like to bend into a specific shape. Maybe we'd like to bend it, say, around our arm, for example. We would actually take a tracing around our arm and get a profile. It would call, be called a profile. We'll take the piece of metal. We'll see how thick the metal is because this particular bending iron has various slots in it and it's got various thicknesses. So we just need to see which is the best one for our application. All right, so what we'll do is take our bending iron, one of our bending irons, and we're going to place it inside the vise, nice and firmly. Where we want to bend our material, we will put it inside the bending iron. We will take the opposite bending iron, place it on there, and we will start our bend to wherever we're going to bend it. So you can see, I can bend it into any shape I like. I can bend it this way, I can bend it back the other way. Whatever shape I desire, I can actually make it. The hacksaw, what actually happens is it's, it's got a whole lot of little teeth on the hacksaw. Now, in order for you to cut correctly with the hacksaw, the teeth have to be facing forward. So this is the front of the hacksaw and this is the handle. So let's call the handle the back of the hacksaw and that screw that's holding it together, the front of the hacksaw. So the teeth will always face forward. It actually shows you on some of the hacksaw blades, it's got a little arrow and it will show you which way the direction of the teeth are facing so that you know which way to put it in. Believe you me, if you put it in the wrong way around, you will not be cutting anything. What we're going to demonstrate now is cutting a piece of steel. If I am right-handed, I will always use the right-hand side of the vise. I will show you that now when we show you the position that we're actually going to put it into. So, when holding my hacksaw, hold it firmly in my right hand with, with all my fingers. My left hand I will place onto the front of the frame. You can hold it with your whole hand. I prefer to hold it with three fingers. Okay. So, you will always start off and your left foot will face forward, your right foot will face to the back. And you'll be cutting on the right hand side of the vice, imperative. The reason for that is, is when you cut through, we don't, the hacksaw will move and it will break away. And if you are cutting on the left hand side of the vice, your hand will be smashed onto the vice and you will hurt yourself. Okay. So, what we're going to do is, we're just going to make a mark. I'll put my finger there to make the mark so that I know where I'm going to start cutting. It's very, very simple, even action. You let the saw do the work for you. You don't need to force it. I can actually saw this piece of material with two fingers and I'll saw it through. Okay, it's a very, very smooth action that you're using and you use the whole blade from front to back. Please don't just sit there and that's not hacksawing. Hacksawing is right from the front, right to the back as I go. Okay. There we go. You will hear that the metal starts changing pitch. The sound will get slightly different. And then you know that you're very close to the end. So there I am through. And you can see the saw went away from me. It didn't damage anything. So if I was a left-handed person, I'd have the saw in my left hand, using my right hand on the frame and I'd be on the left hand side of the vise, right foot forward. Okay, same thing. I'm not left handed, so it's a little bit difficult to actually show you the action. Ready? All right, let's just show you the application of the screwdrivers. You will notice that they have two different types of slots on the heads. This is a flat screwdriver, it's for a flat head, and it's for a flat screw. Small piece of wood, and we had a little hole in it, drilled a little pilot hole. We can put our screw into there, and we can use the screwdriver. You can actually see now that this screwdriver is actually too small for this application. So we have a slightly bigger screwdriver which we can use. It's got a slightly bigger head on it and that will be better for the application because it will go into the groove better. In fact, that one's too big. this one's actually too big. So we have a medium sized screwdriver and we'll look and then see, oh, okay, that fits in there perfectly. You just Cut the screwdriver with your hand and you can start screwing it. You just hold it firmly with your left hand to guide it and you can start turning and the screw will go inside whichever piece of wood that you want it to go into. 
All right. Then we have this one here that's got a slightly different head on it. You'll see that it's got four little blades in it. It's called the Phillips screwdriver. And that's for a slightly different head. This head has got four little slots on it. So that's slightly different. So then we would also find our little pilot hole. We'll put it in, place the screwdriver in the hole and start turning. It will screw. Safety tip, if you're actually screwing something in, you can see I'm actually holding my left hand over the screw to guide it and my right hand's on the top. I don't need to exert too much force when I'm turning. If I do, I run the risk of the screwdriver slipping off and stabbing my finger, which will end up in a nasty cut. And we're going to use it to mark this piece of metal so that I can drill a hole with the drill. Okay, so wherever I desire my hole, I'll put my punch down and I'll be able to hit it with a hammer. That will make a mark for me, a nice grooved mark, so that when I put my drill bit onto that, it won't slide off. Drill press, and I firmly attach it to my drill. Okay, there's two pieces to this the bottom half swivels, and the top part also swivels. So you need to hold the top, and you can turn the bottom, that will actually open or close the jaws of the actual drill. But you need to make sure that you get the drill firmly in the center, otherwise your drill will be a little bit skew. So you can test it by turning the whole drill, the head of the drill, so you can see that it's actually moving in a straight line. All right, so what we have now, we have to make sure that the safety switch is out, we have a few settings on the drill which we can use. I've set it on number two and I can start my drill working. Okay. On the side, I can actually set my speed. I can make it go faster or I can make it go slower. Okay. Drilling metal, you preferably want it slightly slower. You don't want it too fast, otherwise it burns the metal. So, we take a firm hold of the piece of metal on the one hand on the other hand, we will use the, the bars on the side here, which will actually turn. And that handle will find my little hole. There it is. And we start drilling. We don't pull it too hard, because if we pull it too hard, the drill bit will break and it will bend. So we drill it at a nice pace. You can see the little pieces coming off. They're flying off. Okay. Take a firm grip on this piece of metal still, because when it drills, it goes through, it's actually going to kick a little bit. And if I let it go, I will be hurt. There it goes. It's through, because I'm through to the wood. Okay. There we have it. For any piece of equipment, like we've said before, we need to have safety glasses. I don't need the safety glasses because I've got normal spectacles on, they will save my eyes. But if I didn't, I would have to wear my safety glasses that would permanently go on my face first. Okay. The second tip is that when we securing our piece of metal before we're going to drill it, we can use a special pliers. It's called um, a vice grip and it has a vice like grip. It actually locks itself into place. So what we do is we clamp it on our, our piece of material. Okay, it's not fitting, so we can adjust it a little bit to make it a little tighter. Right, there it goes, and it's clamped into place. Okay, working nice and firmly. Now I can actually hold that in my hand. That will hold my, my metal firm, and I'll be able to use my drill and drill my hole in fairly amount of comfort, knowing that it won't slip out of my hand or hurt my hand. Okay. When we're going to rivet something, so we've drilled our hole, and we've made sure that our rivet can actually fit through the hole. Okay. So we need to maybe rivet two pieces of metal together. I'm just going to demonstrate on one piece how to actually rivet. Okay. We have a few pieces of equipment at our disposal. One of them is, is the back of your vise. There's a very, very nice thick solid plate on it, which I will use just now to demonstrate how we actually rivet onto. Or we can use another piece of equipment which we've firmly attached into the vise. It's called a molly. Now, that will get into hard to get into places. So, if I was riveting, for example, this piece of metal onto my shoe, 
I would need to get in there. So in other words, to get in there, it's quite difficult. I can't put it through on the vise because I need one solid piece for my rivet to be ad adhered to and I can knock on the other side. Okay. So then what I would actually do is I'd use the molly and I'd be able to put my shoe onto it and I would be able to then rivet onto it because it's got something holding it underneath, something nice and firm to rivet with. But in this case, we're going to use the vise and we're going to show you how to rivet. Okay. There's two different types of tools that we're going to use. This is a drawing up tool. It's the one that's got the hole in it. And then we've got the rounding off tool. That's the other side there. It's got a slight, slight dent in it, which will give me a nice blemish on my rivet. I'll show you now. We're using a ball hammer, ball on the one end and a flat on the other end to rivet with. There's two varieties of cutters that you can use. You can use the side cutters or you can use the end cutters. End cutters. Yeah. Whichever you desire. All right. If the end cutters have got more force on them because they're slightly bigger, slightly longer hand. Okay, so if we're going to rivet, we'll pop our rivet through there, through the hole. We'll put it down on our flat surface. We then, we'd like to pull that rivet up a little bit. So we're going to use this one with the hole in it, it's called the drawing up tool. So we'll place it over our rivet. And we can't actually use it at the moment because the rivet is too long. So what we need to do is we need to trim our rivet down. So we'll take our end cutting pliers and we'll trim a little bit off. Note I'm holding my finger over the rivet so that it doesn't shoot back into my face. So there we go. We put our drawing up tool on there. And we can hit it with a hammer. The flat end of the hammer and that will pull that rivet up so that it flattens itself into my piece of metal that I'm hitting. Okay. There's my piece of metal, it's nice and flat now. Alright, so I'm then going to cut my rivet off. I'm not going to cut it off too close. I need a little bit of space at the top. My finger over the top again, holding the rivet away. Then what I'm going to do is hold this firmly in the one hand. With the other hand, I'm going to take my hammer, grabbing it on the end, and I'm going to gently flatten my rivet. I flatten it off. When it's slightly flat, I then turn it over so that I can use the half round and I can flatten all around the rivet, slightly all around the rivet, just to get that edge flared over. Okay, then to finish it off, I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to place it on top of the rivet with the flat end of the hammer again. I'm going to then flatten it. Okay. Cool. So there you have. It's rounded off, it's nice and neatly rounded off, and the other end is pulled in flat to where I want it to be pulled into. Okay, so that's how we rivet. Let us explain in the correct way. You will note that there's a blunt end on the knife, blunt edge, and you will see that there's a very nice sharp edge on the other end. I haven't used my finger, I haven't run my finger over the top of the edge because I'll cut myself. Okay. What we need to do is we need to look at a few points. Please do not grab and choke the knife like you're going to stab somebody. You can't cut that way, okay? You cannot cut the opposite way like you're going to stab somebody over the top. It's impossible. The best way I find is to use it like a pen. If you were holding a pen, you would put it neatly into the palm of your hand. You'd use your one finger over the top, okay? And there you can actually cut with it. Note that we're cutting on a specific block these benches have got blocks on them. Please do not cut on the desktop. It's not meant for cutting. That's why we put these cutting blocks. So if I want to cut a piece of this, I'll hold it firmly in the one hand. I'm taking my knife on the other hand. With the sharp end facing down, I will then pull it over the material until it is cut through. A few strokes maybe to get it to cut through. And there we go, my material is cut through nice and neatly. Okay. If I try and cut this way, I'm going to be very inaccurate because I'm not going to be able to conform to what I want. Okay. Some people take it and they cut over the top this way. But as I say, I prefer to do it like this because you've got more control. I can then, in actual fact, cut in a different shape if I want to. Open the 
not this shop. <laughs> okay, material is fairly thick, so you'll need to use a couple of times to go through. There you go. I've now cut in a different angle. Okay, controlled pieces of sandpaper. You'll note if we turn them over, it tells you the, the grit. And the grit means how rough the sandpaper is or how smooth the sandpaper is. This particular one is P100 and normally what happens is, is the lower the number, the harder or the thicker the sandpaper is or the rougher the sandpaper is on a lower number. You will see on this one it says P400 and that is, a, if you turn it over, it's a lot smoother. Okay, it doesn't have the rough sand that this one has. Okay, so just remember that. All right. I'm going to show you quickly, this piece of sandpaper hasn't been cut properly, it's just been torn off. But the correct way to actually cut a piece of sandpaper to get it into a nice, neat piece like this, is you fold your sandpaper. So you put it down on your bench, wherever you want to cut, I will fold it over. Okay. Press it down with my fingers as much as I can, in fact I can even fold it back on itself the other way, all right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it onto the edge, a nice neat edge, I'm going to hold it on that edge and I'm going to pull the one edge away and there you go, it'll cut a nice neat edge on your sandpaper. And please note, if you're tearing a piece of sandpaper, the way I show you is the correct way to cut a piece off your, your big piece, your block, please do not use scissors because this is sand that you have here, it's very very rough, all you'll be doing is you'll be able to cut it, no problem, but your scissors will be very blunt after you've cut the third piece of sandpaper to cut a piece of tubing. This piece of tubing we're going to be using on artificial limbs. Okay. So we'll firmly clamp the piece of tubing in the vise, we won't over clamp it otherwise it will squash my pop. Okay. Ideally, we will have marked exactly where we want to cut. We'll have a little mark and pencil. We will then take our pipe cutter and place it on that mark with the blade on the mark. We'll open it until these two little rollers are sitting flush onto the pipe. Okay, and that side, the actual cutting blade will be firmly on where the mark is. So there it is. There's the two little pieces, and I've got it onto my mark. I tighten it. I don't over tighten it just firm, it's just firmly on there. Now we start turning slowly with the pipe cutter. We'll go in a circular motion. So you can see it's got a slight groove cut in there, then we will give it a little turn, just a little turn again to get it firm and we'll carry on cutting. And each time we go around we'll tighten it a little bit more and we'll carry on cutting. You'll see it'll start getting a little bit loose, so that's when you tighten it a little bit every time that you start cutting with it. If we tighten this piece too tight as we start cutting, it'll cut too big of a groove and what it'll do is, when we start cutting, we will have a huge edge on either side of this cut that will flare up and that's going to cause major problems because this pipe has to fit back into another fitting again so it has to be very smooth. You will note it starts cracking, makes a cracking sound, so we're almost through. We carry on, there we go. We through. You will see now that there is a slight lip on here on the pipe. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it to a machine and we're going to grind it flat again all the way around so that it will fit into another pipe. Flat sander. It's a belt fed sander. It's got a huge big belt on it and we use this one specifically for metal. That's why we specifically brought it into this environment so that it's only used for metal. It does have some extraction pipes on the side has been removed because when this machine runs it creates sparks with the metal onto the actual sandpaper and that will run through the extraction and cause a fire so that's why this machine has been disconnected. Okay, so a few features on, on the machine itself. You have an emergency safety stop which if you plug it in will stop the machine immediately from running. You have to make sure that when you switch a machine on you twist it to the side and it will disengage. You then have two settings on either side. This particular machine doesn't make any difference which side it's set to because there's no extraction on it. 
So we can switch it on. And then if we push the depress the green button, the machine will start running. Okay, guys. In order to use this type of machine, just remember safety tips again, white coat, short sleeves, long trousers, uh, closed shoes or safety boots. I've got my glasses on or my safety glasses. My hair is tied back. I don't have any loose fitting clothing or I've got my watch on but it's firmly onto my arm. When we start grinding, we're going to be using the middle of the machine as much as we can. If we use it too high, it will tend to pull the machine and pull your job back onto yourself. If you're too low, it will also pull it away from yourself. So we're going to try and get it in the middle of the machine. Not too firmly, we're going to put it on, we're going to put it on lightly and we're going to start turning slightly, slightly as we go around to make sure that we actually take off this whole edge so that the edge is now flat again where it was before. Okay, we do have a, a, a small safety guard that's on the top which you may use if you so desire. I prefer not to use it because I can't really see through it, it, it makes it difficult to work. So we normally have it extended up. All right, so once the machine goes on, we will start grinding and you can have a look. of equipment is a vital piece of equipment for these four banks of machines that you see here on the on the side of us it is purely because it's an extraction machine and it takes all the dust that we're grinding away so that it doesn't go into our lungs and cause lung cancer all right so very simple what you need to know is on this box on the front here there's two buttons the one says off and the other one says auto on to switch a machine on you just press it lightly auto on the light will come on and you will see that it will start spooling up we'll switch the air on air comes in from the outside from a compressor we'll switch the top one on and then we'll switch the bottom one on okay the air will flow right through the system so effectively what will happen is as soon as we switch the machine on there's a slight door on this side it will open the door and the vacuum will automatically be sucking through there okay I'm just going to run through this machine quickly just to show you what this is. First of all, the machine is called a router. It's of German descent, very expensive machine. It has a lot of knobs and bells and whistles on it. So basically what happens is we have a piece here, they've all got little wing nuts so they can lock the whole machine. If we loosen it on this side, we can then use this wheel and I can lower the machine or I can make the machine higher to my desired height of working. Okay, once it's your you desired height, you're going to lock it again. You're going to lock it in position. Okay. On this side, we have a whole lot more of these locking levers, and this is our suction. So we need to move this closer, we can move it closer, we can maneuver it into any position we so desire, so that when we're grinding, it will have the maximum effect of sucking all that dirt away. It won't land on us. All right. The machine has a sleeve on it. It's a grinding sleeve. Now, the trick with this is it's got one small end and one big end. Reason being, my shaft has got a small end and it's got a big end. Please do not put this on the wrong way around. Put it on with the big end first so that it goes from small to big and then that will tighten on there, onto the machine, it will grab it because it's going from bigger to smaller. That rubber will expand and open and it will grab it. Okay, firmly on the machine. Right, a few features of the machine. You have an on-off switch, position naught and one. And on your uh, main controls, you have two speeds. You have a slow speed and you have a fast speed. You have to engage one of the speeds in order for the machine to work. So let's engage the slow speed to start off with. We'll engage it 
we need to make sure that our safety stop is out, it's yellow. If it's pushed in, the machine will not switch on. So it's disengaged and we can turn our machine on. Now the machine is ready to use. In order for the machine to turn, we have a, a safety brake, which you will slide your foot into. It's like an accelerator of a car. You depress it and the machine will run. bar on the end of this bar. This is so that we can use various attachments like this particular attachment here which is a rough pineapple we use to grind out or hollow out certain types of material. It just screws on it's all got a thread and by hand it screws onto the machine we get it nice and tight and then we're able to use our machine. If we don't want that attachment we can take it off and we can replace it another attachment maybe a small grinding wheel that we need to put on we can use that grinding wheel okay please note one attachment per machine we don't want to see that you go along and this is what a lot of students like to do is my sanding sleeve is on my machine and then he goes and tries to put this on the other end of it it does not work. Please do not do that. One attachment per machine. Safety. The same as what we did on the other machine. When we're going to grind, we're going to grind virtually in the middle of the machine. Not too high, not too low, because the machine bounces the material off either up or it bounces down. The machines all spin towards you so that it's easier when you get it in the middle and hold it firmly, the material will not move in your hands. Get a nice tight grip on the material. You start your machine and you feed it into the machine. There you go, you can start grinding. Grind any shape I like. Make a nice hollow. I can use the chair and I can grind it flat. button and we will push the off button and there you will see the machine will start counting down until it gets to zero and it switches off. 